The next three questions pertain to the situation described below. All right. A box of mass 3 kilograms is initially held at rest near the top of a frictionless ramp. Okay. So initially held at rest, that's going to imply that the initial is zero. Makes an angle of 20 degrees. I assume that's degrees. Uh, with respect to the horizontal, when the box is released, it accelerates down the ramp. Excellent. Total work done by all forces on the box as it moves a distance D down the ramp is bump, bump, bump. Okay, so we got motion here. I'm going to refer to this as R. So we're going to have hoop, an R vector, meaning direction, going that direction. The definition of work is F dot dr. These are both vectors. F is going to be constant because the force is going to be downward because it will be due to gravity. So this will be, um, let's look at this real quick. So they're just looking for zero positive or negative. So this is a dot product right there. And the dot product basically means the part that is parallel or how parallel two things are. So if we look at this R vector here, we can decompose it into Rx and Ry. And it's only the part that is parallel as opposed to cross product, which is perpendicular. It's only the part that's parallel that's really going to be counted here. So this would be the same as integral f dot dry. So doing the dot product of this long r vector is the same as doing by the dot product of this y component here. Okay, little vector there. Excellent. So what we're concerned about then is this portion and this portion. And since this force and this y component are in the same direction, it's going to be positive. So one of the ways that you've probably been told about how to find the magnitude of a um, dot product is by cosine of theta. So magnitude of f dot dy. Is there two bars? I'm going to say one. Yeah, I'll do two. Eh, no, one looks better. Magnitude, hmm, not sure. I should know that. Is going to be uh, the magnitude of f times magnitude of y without the vector thing times cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between the two. In this case, since they're parallel in the same direction, this theta is going to be zero. Cosine of zero is one. And so this will be multiplied by one. If they're in opposite directions, then it would be negative one, and then for this equation here would be negative. Long story short, both the direction of motion, i.e. the ry portion component, and the force are in the same direction, therefore this is going to be positive, greater than zero. Okay, after the box has moved a distance d equals 1.1, okay, down the ramp from its starting point, what is its speed. Okay, so work is a change in energy. And in this case, it's going to be change in, I'm going to, what's going to happen is we're going to have a change in um, potential energy to kinetic. So we're going to convert the potential energy of this height to kinetic energy at that height, which I'm going to call change in energy potential, which will be mass times gravity times change in height. So this height, h, and I'll call that a delta H. Delta H is going to be, uh, let's see here, this is theta, this there, we're going to call it sine of theta. So this is, would be cosine, this would be sine. So if we're looking at a triangle, draw it real quick. So we have a triangle like this. This is D, this is delta H, and this is theta. And we have Sokotoa, Sokotoa. It's a mnemonic to remember your trigonometric identities. Sine, cosine, tangent. And to find this height here, we're going to use the cosine. Cosine of theta equals adjacent. Oh, no, we're going to use sine. Good cal. Sine. Whoop. Sine of theta equals opposite delta H over hypotenuse, which is D. Therefore, 
rearranging this, we'll find that delta h equals d sine of theta. Oop, there we go. And so, rewriting this one more time, mg, okay, one, we'll do two more times. mg d sine of theta, and this will then be equivalent to some sort of um, kinetic energy, one half mv squared. Simplifying, the m's will go away, so the masses become irrelevant, don't matter. And we have v squared equals 2g d sine of theta. v equals, bump, bump, bump. Hmm. Yep, I think we got this. Okay, calculator time. On clear, 2 times 9.81 times 1.1 meters, which is the distance, times mode, click, click, degrees, hopefully it doesn't erase everything, it doesn't, times sine of 20, 20 degrees. Does that seem reasonable? And so V squared equals 7.38. I just want to get that written down before it disappears. I have little faith in calculators. I know. So, so unfaithful, and lack of faith. 2.717, 2.717 meters per second. Whoop, and see so what we got here, 2.717, that'll be this answer right here, B. So what we did is we just took the um, kinetic energy, or the potential energy from the height, converted it to um, kinetic energy. And if you saw here, the only part that mattered was the height that it fell. That's expressed here with the dot product, dot dr. So if we had a box that fell straight down, um, I guess it would be d sine of theta, but we have a bl uh, block that slides d with an angle of theta. In the end, as long as they fall the same height, they'll have the same kinetic energy at the end. Okay, now we suppose that there is coefficient, there's a friction between the box and the ramp, and the box accelerates down the ramp. The kinetic coefficient of friction is mu k, as the box moves the distance d down the ramp. Total work done by friction is. Okay, so this is almost a completely unrelated question. So we have a box like so going down a ramp, and we have a force friction going this way. We have force gravity going this way. We have theta going that way, and then we have some sort of force normal keeping the box um, from falling through the bottom of the ramp. And so it's asking us the total work done by friction. So work equals integral f dot dr. In this case, this is going to be force friction. Force friction equals normal force times whatever the coefficient of friction is. And that's going to be the normal force for this is going to be mass times gravity times cosine of theta. And this is something I just had memorized. When you decompose this force gravity, you're gonna get um, mg sine of theta sliding down. But the force normal, I guess, force of gravity is gonna be this way, mg cosine theta, and then there's gonna be a force normal in the opposite direction pointing up. That will be also mg cosine theta. And memorizing this cosine versus sine that is useful. Um, you could do the geometry to figure it out, but it's not worth it. Um, do it once, kind of get a vague understanding, and then just memorize. If you're sliding down the ramp, it's going to be sine theta. If it's force normal, it's going to be cosine theta times mu k. And so our work total, I know I'd get rid of that one right there, will be, let's do mg, oh, I know that looks like an s, it's a g, times cosine theta mu k dot dr. Um, bum, bum, bum. So this is constant, that's a constant. So take a look real quick. Constant, 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 constant equals mg cosine theta mu k, and then we have just integral dr. This will just be distance d. So we have mg cosine theta mu k times d. Now we need to make sure we got our sine right. And I'm going to go back to here. Force friction is up. Motion is down. 
they're in opposite directions, so the dot product there will give us a negative one. So this is gonna be a negative. Mg cosine theta mu k times d. Mg cosine theta times d, and then the negative. Oh, there we go. So the answer for this one will be C. Uh, make sure, read the question one more time to kind of make sure I got this right. Now so there's friction, but that the box still accelerates down the ramp. Kinetic coefficient of friction is mu k, got it. As the box moves distance on the rent, total work done on it by friction. Okay, work done on the box by friction. So box is moving down, friction is pointing up, so we've got the negative, and it's gonna to have to do with the normal force, which is why we have the cosine theta. Yep, I'm good with that. So to backtrack real quick, um, this is about a box sliding down a ramp, converting potential energy into kinetic. And the key equation we need to understand here is work equals integral f dot dr, where you're taking integrate, you're integrating the force along the path of dr, the motion of the box. And that dot product is basically saying only use the portion of r of the motion that is parallel to the force. So I hope that helped. I will see you next time.